Akoya, welcome back to Feed the Beast Infinity. I have not been on for a couple of days. I've had my server turned off and I'm just going to turn my server back on right now. I'm going to show you a couple of the issues I've got with the way I've got this set up. One of the issues we have got is the, come on, load quicker, is the the dimensions, the spatial I.O. dimensions, they don't start up. Christ, that took ages. They, they don't start up as soon as I turn the, turn the game on. So what I'm going to have to do once this settles down a bit. Didn't like me being up there, did it? As you can see, a few things have changed. I'm going to talk through all these. One thing I have to do when I come into here is I need to jump in to each of the spatial I.O. dimensions and just... Me being in here, we'll kick this off. So, this is working great. Let's just start off with this one while we're in here. We have got, if we're looking at our divination sigil, we are sat on a nice... 30 million LP because this is fully automated of course and I'm not really using any so and now I've made all that and I can make teleposers if you remember that's all I really needed was teleposers but that said if we look at Steve's we've got Steve's add-ons so we don't actually need um, teleposers for moving that's the main reason why I started on blood magic in this playthrough because I'm trying to be more techy aren't I, in this one so yeah the uh, they're not really as needed as they might have been so we've, we've started that one back up. Let's come over here. So that was the Blood Magic one. Yeah. And this is my new one, which is self hard processing. So I've made this off camera. We're going to get into this one today. What I'm going to set up in this episode, I want to set up a Steve's Factory Manager alloy processing plant. So that's going to be in there. There's my mob farms in here. So I'm going to step in here just for a second. So the first like five, ten minutes of this episode is going to be a quick update on what's been going on. I've set up a little sheep spawner in here, sorry Sace, because I need a lot of wool. And rather than having a sheep farm, I decided I'm just going to kill everything in this this series. I'm going to have animals being produced. And what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to get sheep souls. I've not got any. So I've got a... In fact, what I'm going to set up is an automated way to try and get sheep souls. So what I need is... Another autonomous activator, and what I'm going to make is with some stable ingots, two stable ingots, and a sword. Oops, and a stick. Not a sword. And a stick. We're going to make nothing, it turns out. I thought I could make a sword out of this stuff. These lights are pretty cool. I'm, I'm in four of these just to see what they were like. They're alright. I like them. So, it's a block of obsidian. Lovely. Never actually made one of these before. There we go. We've got now an etheric sword. This is unbreakable. So what I can do is I can add the reaper enchant to that. And uh, once we've got in here, I can add the reaper enchant. And... Ouch. That's going to hurt me, but it takes no damage off the sword there, so that's pretty cool. So I'm going to set up something with the Reaper on to try and get my sheep killed. What I'm going to have to put is fans down, aren't I? Or either fans or conveyor belts. I'm getting all sidetracked, so I don't really need to do that. I'm moving my wither spawn into here. Don't need to do that just now. Uh, I'm going to need wool pretty soon, though. So I might have to do that sooner rather than later. I've got loads of little, little job episodes to do once we've got couple more things done. So that was that room. Mob spawning room and then so if we come in here what you'll see is probably there's gonna be no power in the bees. So not everything runs out. So if you look at that, run all the air full. Okay that's all good. When I did this early on there was no power in these and I, f I think it may be it's maybe the RF tunnels that need me to come into the into the dimension to start off. Uh, I've added more bees. I'm on eight radioactive bees. And what I've added, I've made a lapis, which is pretty straightforwardly just a resilient and a water. So you had both of them. Water's a hive bees, of course. Resilient was one of the ones I used to get to the metals. And then in this next one, we've got emerald, which is just lapis and noble. And then we've got diamond, which is lapis and imperial. All pretty straightforward. In the top here, what have I got? My quantum, my demonic, and my imperial. So they're all in there. And what I've made was because the quantum and the demonic was over here I made an extra couple of radioactives for in there so we've got a full bank of eight radioactives what I've had to do down below here is now once we've got 
beyond 16 of them will start to use too much, taking too much power out of these. These can transfer plenty of power, but when it, con when it connects to this, I think it's only 8k per connection. So what I've done is I've just added an extra pipe, an extra energy flux duct, so now that's putting 60, 16k into these item flux ducts. So that's providing them with enough power. So when I've just got one of these, not enough power's getting through them, and these guys gradually start to lose power. Oh, there was earlier. They've probably got a lot of power stored in there. Yeah, look. So the, the, the fluctuating item duct's losing power because it's not getting enough in. So that'll eventually mean the machines will not have enough power in. So you need, because where these connect, if you look at these, it tells you, of course, transfer amount is per connection. So 8,000 hour for tick is coming through there, but only 8,000 because that's connecting to that. So we're only getting eight, one lot of 8,000 in there, whereas these, I think it's 2,000 each. So these could put 2,000 each in, so this, not that it needs them. But because there's that many of these, there's not enough to put in what it needs. So that doubles that up to 16,000 RF going to these, and that fills these pipes back up. All good. Another little updated thing I've done there then. Let's come out of here. That's just where I was doing the breeding to get the lapis and the diamond. I needed the diamond. No, I didn't. I needed the emerald. Because I got told off after last episode for not having all the turbines running. So, lo and behold, I have connected all the turbines up. I needed emeralds for the energy pylons. Energy pylon. Because if you look at that, they need emeralds. And I had zero emeralds. So, I had to just. I needed a few. So, I decided to. The quickest way to do it was actually sort the bees out so we have now got I think so it's 28,000 each so is it 200 250 odd thousand uh, I think it's about 225,000 hour for tick and 825s would be 200 3 8 24 so is that right so about 224,000 hour for tick and what we've got in here is two trillion rf hooray i'm going to monitor the amount of uranium and eulorium i've got i don't know 778 but we're 18k uranium and i accidentally i accidentally made three stacks of uranium blocks which i thought i could use in the but in the reactors i could maybe use them in the reactors not sure let's have nine of them oh no that was not what i wanted to happen <laughs> Radiation poison for 45 seconds. Am I going to die? So I've got no region, of course. I wanted to see. What did it actually go in there? Oh, cool. My, my shielding ring is giving me regen, which is. Must keep me alive. So if we look in there. I'm curious if they can go in there. Oh, this is irritating. Back in 12 seconds. Well, I've just quickly ghettoed something together in here. I have got a Aquas. No, I've got Autonomous Activator in there. That's got my Etheric Sword with Reaper 4 on it. As you can see, it is destroying these poor sheep. I've got a fan there. A fan there. I believe these can spawn outside of this cage. So I have to be careful. I maybe need to fill these with glass. But what we're aiming to get here. I come in there is got one already mob soul as soon as I've got mob souls what I'm going to do I'm going to have mob soul spawners and this is how I'm going to do it uh, what I need to do is get this up, hooked up this is all very ghetto at the minute like I said I've got loads of little jobs to do what this gets me of course is enderman heads and ender pearls what, the way I've got this I've changed this for one of the wonderful mob grinders so that thing if you shift click it with a wrench you can see where the area is where it can kill so you can see our area is the entirety of the inside of that cage is I don't even know here it can kill as well well that's where that can kill so that, that's killing in a 5x5 five five area for me around the mob spawner eventually I plan to have a mob spawner for each of these I've got nowhere collecting the stuff off the sheep at the minute which is why I'm still here doing it manually but yeah eventually I want all I want all draconic stuff just because uh, it's a pack with draconic in it and I don't know how many packs with draconic in I'm going to get to play with so I might as well use what it's offering me but there's a little little get set up if I do a vacuum hopper on the top 
void fluid pipe for the XP and something similar to this for the woolen stuff. But it's getting me wool, mutton and mob souls. Different colour wool as well, which makes it a bit of an issue. I can get myself four mob souls and make a second one of these draconic spawners. One of these guys. For sheep, for wool. Now, something else I need to get. What else do I need to get? I don't need something else. What was I thinking? I need a load of wool for something. Oh, I don't want to, I need a load of wool for uh, Steve's factory manager. And we want the camouflaged blocks, which means I need advanced cable clusters because if you look at the transforming cable camouflage, so that guy goes all the way back and needs three wool for each one of them. So I need a load of coloured wool for these, which means I need a load of dyes as well. And I've not got dyes or well, I'm starting to get wool. I've not got dyes either, so I need an absolute ton of them because I'm going to have 64 alloy smelters and I want all the cables to be camouflaged because it just makes the build tardier. I'm going to need a load of them. That's ender pearls, that's easy enough. So I can do that bit, but I need the wool. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go a little bit of a side track and set up a Britannia flower farm, I think. I could do it with bees. I could set up, because we have got, if it looks back at that, and look in here, we've got lapis, blues fan, We've got floral powder, and we have got, there we go, we've got blue coloured honey. And that gets us a drop from each one of them. So I could do it through bees. But I might as well just use it. I might as well just use a little Britannia flower plant. I'm trying to do it all ticky and all bee though, aren't I? So should I do it with bees? What do you reckon? I'll have a little think of that. I'll come back in about 10 minutes when I've had a think. Okay, I had a bit of a think about it, and yet yeah, I'm. I've got, I love Britannia, Britannia is awesome, but in this pack I'm trying to do, because I, I did a lot of magic in my uh, last series, I'm trying to do not so much in this pack, so I'm trying to stay minimum amount of Britannia and farmcraft and stuff, and because I'm using bees already, I thought it makes sense to use bees, turns out I actually already had blue and red, because if you remember we made, I think it was pink, that had the fastest production speed, so I've already had the things there, so all I need to do was use that to imprint a red princess and drone, a blue princess and drone, I'll just give them my production stats, so they've got, both got production stats now, now what I need to do is make a production, production upgrades, I need to make 8 of them for each one, so 16 of them, I've not got enough tinkers out of ingot, which is why I need to make myself, damn it, so why I need to make myself more uh, an alloy smell uh, alloy in plant because this all needs to be automated and at the minute it's not so things like endarium and tinkers alloy so i need copper uh, one two three and tin so what i'm going to do now is kind of stand around a bit while i process because i've only got one alloy smelter set to alloys at the minute copper and tin in there of course gets me tinkers alloy which is a bronze um, analog Use for bronze gears and stuff, tinkers, alloy gears. So that is what I'm getting out of this. Uh, that goes in there. Uh, yeah, what I need to do is set up an alloying plant. I did the same in Die Wolf 20, and I've, I've been asked to show it a little bit more because in the Die Wolf episode, I kind of came back to it and modified it a couple of times. So what I've done is I've created a new area for that. Now, one of the things we're going to need for that is going to be doing multiple crafting. So we've only, we can only craft one thing at a time at the minute because we've only got one crafting thing. So I've made three more. And they're just there. They're not wired up yet. I'm going to bring that fourth one up here. I may have eight up here. I may slot another four in, in between. So I have eight, and then I have eight over there, and I have four more of them stacks over there, eventually. So I've got a lot of auto crafting capability. Oh, well, someone asked me in a comment what these are. These are called charged quartz fixtures. They're from, they're a light source from Applied Logistics 2. And all they are is a charged quartz and an iron ingot, and you get two. I quite like them. I think I'm going to use them in regrowth for my vault. So yeah, what have I done down here? I've, I've changed things around a bit. To get the, while we're waiting on this tinker that I like, I might as well talk about this. To get the reactors all wired up, what I wanted was, I wanted a P2P coming off this main wire and coming in. So I've got water feeding in. We don't need water in now because it's an enclosed system, but that's got water feeding in still anyway. So we're looking, no, we can't look in that one anyway. So reactor coolant port is feeding water into the reactors, which is feeding it, turning to steam in the reactors, of course. 
the stream gets used in the turbines, gets turned back to water, which gets fed back, so that's a loop. And then um, that's how we had the first one set up. So I wanted the, I wanted all the resources coming in from the left hand side of each one to keep them uniform. So what I did was before I had, if you remember, I had the power coming out. The best way of looking at this is with my network tool in my hand. I had the power coming out and then splitting both ways and then going up two columns. What I've done now is I've changed that. I've got the power coming out on each and just going left and up each column. So there we go, power out goes left and up that column and same there up that column and same there up that column a couple of other things I've done to help with this is on one of these is a lever it's there we've got our toggle bus there which is turning on and off the spatial thing this, I had a bit of an issue with this I had to build one of these by hand for number five because when I put the blueprint in there I was not getting the pattern built so now it's working again this is a fresh blueprint so I had to build one again manually and then put the blueprint in so I make that work again so I think it's the update and blank that one out so I've got a dud blueprint in here there we go that one is now dud so if you see what I mean it might be a talk episode this see what I mean that one it doesn't put the frame there no longer it doesn't ask for tools it's dropped straight into the bottom so I had to make that new one which works so be careful when you're updating. Uh, yeah, I made cells five and six actually. We're going to use cell five, but I've actually made six as well. Uh, what I want is I want none. Like I've said from the start of the series, I only want in this place is power and applied logistics. So I want these going into a Britannia cell. I want these going into the processing cell, and these. And um, that's a. So that's going to stay. I'm going to change that so. So how Etho did it on his series, I like it better. Oh, this is going to go into like an enchanting cell. Uh, enchanting stroke research, I might put my Foundcraft research in there as well. Of course we need a Foundcraft cell. So they're going to go in there. There's loads of little jobs though. Loads of little jobs, that's going to take me time to do. So when I, anyway, when I moved all that around, I couldn't find anywhere where I liked the energy things. The dense energy cells that we need for powering the spatial thing. So they're actually, if you come and break a couple of blocks here, they're just going down hidden so I've got I've got 20 of them now so I made more I actually had them as a build feature for a bit but I didn't like the way it looked where well, I had them if you remember I had slopes coming down from these which was the ways down and I had them running underneath but I didn't like it so I changed it and I've ended up changing this a bit making these into circles and putting ladders everywhere so you can actually get down into the pit the kind of look I'm going for here is if you've watched Star Wars on the on the Empire ships where they have like, lowered areas where the crew are and the bridges of the Star Destroyers kind of like that look is kind of what I'm going for but uh, anyway I should have now plenty of Tinker's alloy so make sure we hit the right one which is um, this one we can add a couple of bees into the mix now what I also need to do is make sure these get fed to the right place for processing so what we should have now is I'm able to make let's try that again in production so 16 of them we can make now sweet so I put in all the crafting stuff for them and uh, there we go and we need automation and I want two of them lovely and what we need to catch so that's full these are not full these two are uh, empty so we're going to have one of them, eight of them and red in there we're going to have one of them, eight of them oh, CD. and blue so I should be getting red and blue what did I want blue for? I wanted... I've got lapis for blue mmm oops A little rage thing there uh, what do I need for the Steve's factory manager? it's green wasn't it? primary colours no green is not a primary colour but green is what I needed like TV, red, green, blue. So green, I need a green bee. I've not got a green bee, have I? I need to make a green bee. White, red, pink, magenta, blue, damn it. So green, it's a little bit more camera work then, but you get the gist. Green, I get from blue and yellow, okay? Yellow, I get from modest and diligent. Don't think I've got a yellow either, have I? 
No, so I need to get a modest and a diligent. Got none of either at the minute. So I shall have to make up a modest. I'm sure I'll have modest and diligent in here. Uh, majestic, magenta, marshy meadows, modest. There we go. So I'll create a diligent using forestry bees. Diligent, there we go. And I'll give them breeding stats. Oops. Uh, get that into a diligent. I'll breed up, I'll get to green, I'll get some green dyes coming in, and then I shall carry on with the rest of the episode. Okay then, bred myself up a green, and I've added green and yellow to the the genetic templates there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the 16 colours we've got. So the green's in there, I took the blue back out because I don't really need blue because I've got a lot of lapis. So that's all good. And uh, we can jump back out of here. Now, what I've scandalously not shown you is the demon invasion, which is exactly the same as it was last episode, really, so that's why I haven't bothered. What I'm going to do is, what I did, do I stopped, what, well, in fact, let's have a look what we've got in here. If we look at honey drops now, honey, we have got red, there was a blue that I've stopped, and now we've got green coming in as well, a little bit yellow there from when I bred some yellow ones, and we've got 59k honeydew, and what we've also got now is a lot of be uh, a lot of wax because I stopped wax being destroyed. So we've got five thousand wax. So what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a stack of wax capsules, chuck them back in there, and I'll make myself a stack of ambrosias. Lovely. And what ambrosia can do for me is one, I can use it as a food source. So I don't need my mana cookies anymore. I probably still use my mana cookies for this. But two, let us go to the demon invasion. Three. Demon invasion and jump through. What I can do now, if I so desire, is oh, I thought it was night time then. Is if I drop down here, uh, of course I need to get on my bound sword because that's the weapon of choice in here. And if I go and fight this guy, and let him hit me. Not angry guy. Well, he's just running off. There we go. Now, of course, I've got my regen. This makes your eyes go weird as well, doesn't it? But well, that gives me my little bit of eight seconds regen. If I eat one of these, I get a nice. Oh. There we go. A 40 second regen. That's not bad, is it? So I've got these little ambrosia things that give me 40 second regen each. So that kind of, since I'm doing bees for stuff, I might as well utilise all the wax and stuff I'm making. And uh, that's what, wax, is it wax ambrosia, sorry, wax, honeydew and royal jelly, that we get from the Imperials, we get honeydew from the Imperials as well. So that's all good. You see I'm starting to get, is it uh, dripping comb we get from Imperials, yep, there we go. So royal jelly, dripping comb, so honeycomb and... In fact, I get everything I need to make ambrosia. So I've got region on tap now, which is pretty nice. And there goes the phone. I best restart my client because of the hitching as well. Relog then, and my hitching has gone away. It's one of the things that I've got a little bit issue with this build. It's I think the spatial IO. It was nice to show people on that, but the fact that I start getting I start getting dimension lag after I jumped around a few dimensions is kind of irritating me a little bit. Right, what I want to do before I do anything else is I want to jump into where the sheep are, and see if we've got four sheep souls yet. Because mob souls are a good thing. I put a bit of glass in between them and them to stop it. Stop mob spawning down there. And we have got we've got three. So we're nearly there. So when I get one more, I can actually tidy this up and make a draconic spawner for that. But we've got a bit of wool to keep us going, which is also good. So there we go. That is how I'm gonna be doing my wool gathering same for like uh cows and stuff and that when i get it all i plan to have uh three six nine twelve of these little spawn areas in here when i'm done yeah right so what i can actually get on with now then is this is region one by the way my ring gives me region two so the ring does overwrite so if i drink one of them 40 seconds then get hit and i get the eight seconds from the ring then the ring wipes out the 
ring that guy. The ring weights out that one, so I've got to make sure I'm using them. If I do use them, I could just as easily put one of the environmental controllers in that zone there. Just have it, have it up there. Anyway, sidetrack, sidetrack, sidetrack. Let's now then start working on getting an alloy smelting area. Part of the reason for this is that's it, the Tinker's Alloy for the bees I need. Uh, Enderium uh, is, some, is something I need. We've only got this one alloy smelter being used at the minute. What I want to do is... Right, I've got a couple of things. Let's just interrupt that. I've got a couple of things I want to do here. I want to... So, right, Steve's factory manager. I'm going to have to set off automation up for these. Hi. Oh, one of the things, I'm going to have to change my GUI. I'd never knew. Because that was always off the bottom of my screen, I, c I can still type in here when I've got this open. Now that I'm on a better size GUI, lovely. Uh, I'd have changed it ages ago, I'd have realised that. Right, so what I want in here is... Make some Steve's Factory Manager stuff. I'll get this done off camera, in fact. So I'm going to put in the recipes for Inventory Manager, Inventory Cable, Advanced Cable Clusters, which need cable clusters as well, and then Cable Camouflage, Red, Green and Blue Wool, Double sided, triple sided. I've got a sticky piston and iron in there. So I should be able to make all the things I need for this. Um, yeah, I should be able to make all of them. What I've got is if I jump into cell 5, cell 6, 1, 2, 3, cell 6. Okay, so my processing cell. What I've got in here so far is just 64 alloy smelters all set to alloys. And I'm using the fluctuate item ducts again on the back, I need a few more, I need to get three more and uh, I'm going to use them resonant, resonant retriever things to pull the stuff out of these so that should pull them all out, what we're going to have is we're going to have Steve's, we're going to have invisible Steve's factory managers all in the front of these which are going to go to a factory manager in here somewhere which will have all the control for the putting in of the items, then we're going to have a strong box and we're going to have, to start off with, I'm just going to try it with one ME interface. With, it's got nine recipe slots in it, so we'll see if that works. If things start getting mixed up, I might have to use more than one resident strong box and more than one interface. But I'll get all the bits ready to start putting this thing together for the rest of the episode. Okay then, I think I'm ready to go with this. I think I've got everything I need. I've got four of them mob souls from the sheet, by the way, so I can get on with that at some point. What I need to start with this is I need to start and cover each of these with one of these transforming cable clusters so as I showed you last little bit there it's a cable cluster that gives you an empty one but these have been combined with the transforming cable camouflage there are those guys so that's a th like a third tier of them and I'll show you for why in a minute once we get the inv inventory manager down but you have to use these to be able to camouflage so I'm going to place all these guys down, it doesn't matter which way they're facing or anything cause all we need is access to each of these alloy smelters with this. I should have really done this bit off camera, but I've done quite a bit of stuff. No, no, I've done loads off camera. None of these have got capacitors in yet. And of course, to make the capacitors, I need 128 energetic alloy. And uh, for the doubles, then we're coming to into octadics. So it's... it's, it's so with 256 of the energetic and 120 of the vibrant so what I actually want to use, I want to use this system to actually make them so what I've got is my A-line running down here under there so my A-line of course that comes out of here into this dense cable, I've just got it coming off on a smart cable but when I get more processing stuff in here I'm hoping this cell is going to be full of all my processing stuff by the way that's the idea, it's going to have all my uh, liquid manufacture and my smelting and all kind of stuff that's the plan so that cable runs under the floor out up here and what I need to do before I do anything else is I just need to break that block there and what I want to put on here is a P2P tunnel which I have shift clicked on the power P2P out in the overworld oh it's not floating above like that there we go so now if I give that a click that's connected and these should all have power which they have, they already had power actually but um, because I did initially run a cable and I changed my mind if I was, I was going to do it so it was already full but now that's going to be putting power via the P2P 
into all these. So they've got power. They've all got these fluctuating item ducts on them. And these run back into the I mean, interface. So what I need to do next is resonance servo into there. So that's going to pull things into there. I want that so it's always on. Uh, enabled. Always on. And I don't think it's going to pull from the input slots. So it should only pull from there. We'll see. We may have to mess around with them a little bit. But what that's going to do is anything that comes into the output slots, it should pull out back into the AME interface, which of course is just going to drag it back into the network. Now we need to put things into the AME network. Uh, sorry, it needs to pull things out of the AME network to get into here. So we're going to go over Resident Strongbox. On top of that, and we're going to have recipes in here for nine of our alloys. Now we may need more, like I said, we may need more of this. We could always just have another interface on the front here if we need to. So we could always add another nine on the front using a flat one. And then on top of that, what I want to do is I want to put the Steve's factory manager, inventory manager there. And now all I need to do is I need to connect this to them so they're all connected. Right. First thing I want to do in here. So the rest of this episode is going to be a little bit heavy on Steve's inventory, oh, Steve's factory manager, so I do apologise. Ooh, look at that. Awesome. Copy. Very nice. This is new. Mmm, RF as well. We have got Steve's uh, add-ons, like I mentioned, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video. So I was making teleposers, blood magic, so I could move these around without losing what was in them. And we've actually got Steve's add-ons to do that. Yeah, RF. So I think Steve's add-ons might add the RF stuff. But, copy, that's interesting. First thing I want to do is create a command group. And we're going to call it Camo. Save. And in there, right, right, actually, first one I want to do is use preferences. Groups will be automatically closed when the interface is reopened. Uh, click on the top part of a command, will open a closet yet. Click on the use name, will open a closet yet. Enlarging the group command opens a group. Yes, please. Or show the command type of the command even when it's named. Don't know about that one. Enlarging the fish to fit the full screen, not use the full option for new crafting commands. Prioritize movement, I think I want that. Empty blacklist for input. Uh, I don't really need that one, I don't think. Okay, I think that's all I want it. So let's go in there again. Um, back up there. You go back, yep. The camo should send me into it. So now I'm inside camo because I've just changed that. And what I want in here is I want a trigger. And I want an input. And I want two outputs. No, I don't. I want just a trigger and two output there, uh, two inputs. So I'll bin that. So one of my inputs is going to be oh, you land up. Got to have things lined up, you know. Oh, that's not lined up. It's going to kill me. Yeah, there we go. So one of these is going to be right. Oh man. What is one of these going to be? It's going to be an inventory, does it? What am I doing? <laughs> right. Create. Camouflage update is what I actually want. There we go. So I don't want to be in foot at all. Camouflage, camouflage. Put you down there. Right, this one wants to be blocks. All bounds, update bounds. You see that there? The collision of bounds can only be updated in a transforming cable camouflage. That's why I had to use the highest level of them. Update bounds. Yep. Yeah. And I want this side to be zero, zero, and zero on the outside. All the sides. Let's clear us the camouflage. Hmm. That's changed a little bit, I think. No camouflage setting selected. I don't want it to be like that then. I 
There we go. Yeah, and that's that's clear. There we go. So because of what I've done there then, so in camo, camouflage, yeah, all the blocks. Hmm. All the blocks, yeah, all the blocks. Bounds set to zero, so no collision and the cat's see them either. All the sides, that's just clears it. What that does is that sets me so they're all invisible. So we can't see any of the any of these guys, these advanced cable clusters. And then what I want to do on this one is have the same, all the blocks again. This time the bounds will be updated. We'll leave it at 32 this time, we'll leave the rest. And then if we want to bring them back for any reason, like that, that's going to bring them all back for us. So we shouldn't ever have to bring it back, but it's just nice to have a way of bringing it back if you need to. So there's our first thing. That's our camo sorted. So we can move that out of the way now. Next thing we want to do is create an array. So we need to create a variable, I mean, and for each loop, two concerning variables. They're going to come over here. For each loop is going to stay over there. What we want to do on this is on this top one, we want to select all the alloy smelters. So alloy found select all. So that's found 64. Selected all the alloy smelters in there. That's all good. That's all we need to do. And this one, all we need to do is change that to orange. And I have explained that before, I can never remember and to how to explain it well enough. But basically what you're doing is, when we're using the for each loop here, the for each is looking at our list. Now our list is the white, so our list is, our list is all the alloy smelters. And our elements within the list are the orange ones, so each, each alloy smelter is a sand orange, I think. That's explaining it right. So basically it's saying go through each of them alloy smelters. That's all it's saying. So it's saying check each one of them. So that's that bit done. So we can leave that over there. And now we want our actual trigger. And then for each of these, we want to look what's in the box. And if the box matches a certain thing, we want to say put the right number of that thing into these. So what we're going to do is we're going to use group nodes again. So let's create a command group. And this time in the command group, the first thing we want is group nodes because we want one as an input and one as an output. And what that's going to do for us is when we come back out of here, we see now that this group node's got an input and an output. So this first one's going to input onto there. So I guess the first thing we want to make is vibrant alloy. So let's come back. Let's come back and press shift on there. Change the name of that. So Reverend Alloy. There we go. Now if we go in there, in here we are gonna want input and output. Let's get all these lined up. Do 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 I've been listening to some 80 music and quite enjoying myself. I've actually been listening to the Wave 103 uh, soundtrack from Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And it's got Flock of Seagulls and stuff on it. Enjoying it too much. I like a bit of the old 80s stuff. Right, so our input is going to be the Resonant Strong Box. Our target, doesn't matter, our items, in this case, hmm. Right, I actually want to do an if. We want to do an if on this. Yes, we do. So it's been, right, let me let me do this right. I'll do this first one. So we want a condition. Yeah, let's get it right, Akko, come on. Uh, I've not actually checked how I did this before. I'm just trying to do it off memory, which might be the bad way of doing it. So, our node actually wants to go over there. Our input and our output want to be from the condition. So we are going to say if in the resonant strong box, doesn't matter which side it is, if requires all we want on, if in there is gold ingot, glowstone, and redstone, 
If all three of them elements are in there, if all three of them items are in there, then this is true. If it's true, we're going to take from that resonance strong box, no matter which side again, those three items. So whitelist, and we want gold, we want glowstone, and we want redstone. But, not only that, we want to right click these, we want to specify amount, we want it to be one. So, on each of these, we only want to take one. That's the key part. And then, so our input, our output, is going to be show variables, and we want, which one is it again? I believe it's orange. Target, don't matter items don't matter. So that's our first one there. So if we're looking here from the main, we've got that and we've got a node out of that. So if it doesn't contain them things, it'll come out and we can go on to the next one. So what I should be able to do now is if I create a recipe for Vibrant Alloy, let's come back to my pattern terminal, which is this one. So I want Vibrant Alloy. Oops. I actually do that from in there, I'm not used to that yet. No, not Vibrant Alley. Energetic is what I mean. I've been doing the wrong one. Energetic Alley. So, yeah, Glowstone, Redstone, Glowstone, Dust. Uh, gold. Glowstone. Redstone. Equals. Energetic. It's a processing pattern. Oh, there we go. Equals an energetic. And while we're here, let's get. Let's get. One of them and an ender pearl. Equals a vibrant. Have we got any vibrant in here? I have. So let's get that recipe as well. We'll do that one next. Now if we jump back in the cell, which is that's the right one, yeah. What we need to do before I do anything else. In fact, what I'll do before I do anything else, is I'll put them two patterns in there. And then what I'll do is I'll just change the name of this to the right one. So if I shift and all that yet, yeah, we'll change that to energetic. No, Jessica Light, save that. Right, so what should happen now is if I request some energetic, we've got E4 already. If I suggest, if I request another 100, what should happen is all these should fill up. And what each of these should have, I haven't worked. Oh, right, I know what I've done, damn it. So that didn't work properly because what I should have done, if we come back in here, in the output, we actually need in here to whitelist in here as well. And it's actually probably more important in here. It's a whitelist and we need to set to one in each in there as well. So glow specify one. So now I'll put one in each of the alley smelters then. So it maybe doesn't need to be specified one in each in there. But I'll leave it because I don't think it's going to hurt. But that's actually the important part. Yeah, because we've got, remember in there we've got that set to one of each. Doesn't actually matter. We could, let's get rid of that. Yeah, I'm positive that doesn't matter. So let's get rid of them. And these are all real slow. Because we've got no doubles in there yet. Can I, how many of them can I craft? Uh, 128 I need. Yeah, I can craft all, Ooh, no crafting CPUs are available. Right, there's my, other, there's my next issue. Because we have got this craft job going, I've only got one crafting PC, um, CPU setting, set up outside. 
Yeah. This is still going because it's not got 64 yet because it's waiting for these. These should be pulling from that thing. Not pulling very quick, are you? Why are you not pulling? Ignored. Blacklist. Blacklist. Shouldn't matter. Nearest first, fairest first, random, round robin. Is that going to do it? I think round robin should check through them all. Oh, come on, damn thing. Bit derpy, isn't it, this? Well, I'm doing it. Give me a second, let's see if this clears. Slight change of plan then, what I can do is I can make these push out, can't I? So I don't actually need to have that guy on at all. And breaking that is what crashed me before, but it seems to be alright now. I did save my world before I started doing this, just in case that broke my world again. So now what should happen is anything that gets thrown into these, you should not be in there. Why are you in there? Oh, I must have, oh, I know what I must have done. I must have set him as a... When you click on him, it clicks to input first, doesn't it? And if you click on that, it goes to pull, and then push. So what I've done is I've pulled other ones into these ones, haven't I? So I need to clear all them out. Well, that should be not an issue. Hmm. That should be not an issue. Now I've done that. So yeah, we don't need them resident retrievers. Because what should happen is because these are all on push. None of these should allow items in there. Okay, so it should just push the items straight back into the enemy interface. Which in turn, of course, pushes them back into the network. Right, so are we still crafting on that crafting job? I can look at crafting status. It's crafting 53 of them. Let's cancel that. So let's now ask it for let's ask it for another sixty four. So energetic, one hundred and thirty one. Let's have another sixty four please. Bang. And it should now fill all these up. I think it is. Are you doing what I want you to do? Well it's one each and every one that we're seeing which is a good thing but not one each and everything is they so why not There's nothing clear in there have I got stuff jammed up in stuff <sighs> yeah same on this side as before isn't it so <laughs> massive depths all around so you can't put it won't have been allowed to put any in them. Ah, right, and that's the other thing. Right, I remember. I remember another little issue that it has. Is... Because it triggers every second. It sometimes doesn't have the chance to check through all the possibles. Oh, man. Why have you all got bits in? This shouldn't have happened, I don't think. You've all got stuff in your inputs. I mean, none of these should have. Oh, they have. It's not working, is it? I think I need the retrieval thing on still. Damn it. Okay, so I've added the next one on. Exactly the same, apart from this one is for Vibrant Alloy. So instead of asking for gold, redstone and glowstone, it is asking for energetic alloy and an ender pearl. And it's just good practice and keeps things a bit easier to follow if you name them. So now, I'm not sure if they were all trapped in there from before, to be honest, because it was asking for 53 more still. We've got 248 in there now, and I only asked for 56 then, didn't I? So if we look at our energetic, we've got 248. So I think they might have all been trapped in there before, so it might still be working without them guys on, so I'm going to take them off again and risk more crashing and 
aim safe up to now. I say crashing if you don't watch the early in the series. When I was taking one of them off, I got stuck with it bouncing between myself and my inventory, and I had to go back to a save and lost about a days off of work. So, uh, right, let's try then. This time, vibrant. And let's ask for 103. Now you're going to fill them all up. Looks like we're about full up. So let's see if they all end up where they're meant to. So we don't want them in there. Right, yeah, the other thing I should have done is this trigger on the interval, just have it to two seconds. Because when you've got like 64 things like this, it needs time to cycle through them all. If you know what I mean. So what we should end up with is when all these are done is oops is in here energetic no no vibrant getting mixed up again 58 there you go you can see them coming in so that's all our stuff clear in there we should end up if it's done right don't look like it's worked right does it uh, how many did they ask for did ask for 100 and yeah look still wants 41 oh no they're still going where are they then? Are they just waiting to be pulled in? Ah, yeah, they are, look. There they all are. They're getting pulled in. Okay, so it takes a little time with these. The extra utilities ones certainly would be quicker, I think. But once they're all pulled in. So they're all pulled in. Cool. And Vibrant. Sweet, so we've got 128 Vibrant Alley. So it looks like, to me, that that's working. So what I'm going to do between episodes is I'm going to fill this up with... All the other ones. So we're going to want um, quartz. What's the quartz glass called? Uh, <laughs> I like smelt. Uh, come on, give me there somewhere. I smelt. Uh, we are looking at that one. So four of them equals a fused quartz. Of 12 of them equals three fused quartz. So I'm going to have fused quartz is going to be one of these. Endarium blend and endarium is going to be in there. Uh, Tinker's alloy is certainly going to be in there. Let's uh, let's do one more really quick on camera. So all I'm going to do now is, if you want to stop watching, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to repeat. I'm going to make a new one for Tinker's alloy. So first, to kind of give you a show of how we do it, just in case I've not been clear up to now. So first thing I need to do is. I need to come to here and I need to grab a bit of copper and a bit of tin. Now I'm working through these eye ones because I think these copper and tin is what the bees are producing. So I'm going to get rid of these ones first. Copper and tin and they're going to make me a tinkers. This is actually slightly different, isn't it? Because what we want here is three copper and one tin equals a tinker dollar ingot. So there's our crafting pattern. We'll come back through to cell five. What I can do in here. So our tinker's thing goes in there. As you'd expect. And so now what we want then, so create a command group. Our command group goes down there. We're gonna go in the command group. And in fact before we do it we'll we'll call this Tinker's alloy. Not sure if that needs a comma or anything there, but I'll leave it like that for now. I'm going to go into that. Two group nodes. Make one of them an output. And that one is going to come over there-ish. We want our first node there. Then we want our condition. And that is if the condition is false, if you remember. Now condition is if the resonant strong box contains copper oops copper ingot and we're using the thermal ones aren't we? Is it that one? Oh Christ. That one isn't it? If it contains that and tin 
and it's that one but if it contains that and that requires all then that's a true condition so then we want an input and output on the true condition our input is from the resonance strong box whitelist copper ingot and right click on that to clear which is nice tin ingot so double check I've got the right ones here they look like the thermal ones to me but they all look a bit the same when you're looking at loads of them so that's all we need to do in there and then in the output slightly different this time output variables orange whitelist what I was putting here is copper ingot oh, man <laughs> that one this time we'll specify three of them yes three of them and tin ingot We'll specify one. Right, let's make sure I've got all these right. Let's get a copper and a tin. Let's just double check I've picked the right ones here because you know my eyes. So tin is alloy, copper and tin. Does that actually tell me if I look on it? Oops. Don't tell me the item ID, does it? That's the right one though, isn't it? I'm sure it is. Okay, so let's now attach that to there. So that's our next one. So now if we ask for 64... Ah, I think I've done wrong. Bring that back out of here. I've done that wrong, haven't I? I've said it creates one. It doesn't create four. So let's jump back out of here. It's actually a quick, bit quicker if I use the charm thing. Um so if we come around to this side what I actually want to do is if I put that back in there and I actually want that to say it works for them and then we'll clear that recipe off that shift right click clears them recipes put the blank back in there we can get a fresh one that says it creates four with four so that's all good so now let's just go back to cell 5 teleport a little bit quicker with that cost me an ender pearl but it's no big deal so now put that in there and ask for 64 of them let's ask for 100 of them 75, 25 creates 100 things are lit up, we're not going to get all of them lit up this time because each one creates four, so we should only be getting 16 lit up. Is that about 16? So we should start seeing when they're done, Tinker's ingots coming down here. That should always empty because whatever we're getting sent in there has got an output, and there we go. We can see our Tinker's ingots going down there. Excellent. So all we need to do now is watch that. Once it's got all twenty, uh, all hundred of them, that's going to clear the crafting, and we are done. Sweet. So the only way it could hiccup, up, possibly, is if I asked it to do two things at once. But when I did this before, it didn't hiccup up doing that, so I'm confident it won't do it again. So there we go. We have got our first three recipes in there. I'll put some more recipes in between episodes, and we have got automated crafting of them. Um, now, can I make? 64 of these. I don't think I've got a recipe to make glowstone blocks. I have nuts. Right. So I'm going to finish off just by making 64 of them because I want one of them in each of them. And if it didn't have enough vibrant, it should be able to craft them for me now, shouldn't it? So we need a recipe for glowstone blocks. adding into the vanilla part of this 
Now what we also might not have is nerve, because we've not got processing set up on a pulverizer or a sag mill, we might not have enough coal in dust form. Oh we have, I've got 1400, that's all good. So what we should be able to request now is 100, uh, sorry, 64 octatics. Craft 64. Everything's ready to go because it can craft them now. It can craft them, it can craft them. It's got all the stuff it needs. And if we look up here, we should see a wonderful bit of action going on in one of these. So, oh, it's just using that one, is it? No, oh, no, it's using four of these. Look, so that recipe must be in this one. Or oh, if it's hitting them three, it must be in that one. Yeah, it's not using that though, is it? There we go. That's crafting them for me. So I can add one of them into each of the alloy smelters in there, so it'll be even quicker. Problem is, it's not going to pull them quicker, is it? Out of it. So it's not going to speed me up much. I may change it to extra utility stuff. Uh, I'm kind of trying to use the thermodynamics because it's new. But I think I like the, th the extra utilities. Now, they're both made by RW Temer, so it's not like a... It's not like I'm favorite, being favourite to one mod, mod, one mod author over there. But anyway. 37 med. It's, asking, it's crafting 107 more energetic. Oh, I thought I had enough. So I calculated that wrong, hadn't I? So if we go back in there then, we should see some action going on. Let's have a look. There's no action going on there, is there? Oh, man. Why have you all got two of them in there? It's gone wrong! Yep, I have to change it. Right, so I'll start the next episode. I'm going to change this setup. It's dropping them back in there and blocking stuff in it. Shouldn't be doing that. I'm going to have to manually clear all them out. So all I can think is the way I've got it pulling up the back is not good. Because it's pushing them back in the back. Even though I've got nothing set to push in, they're all just set on push and not push pull. Now, if they were set on push pull, I'd understand it. But they're not, they're set on just push. But it's certainly tripping the system up, isn't it? Because otherwise, we wouldn't see. Won't see all these lots in here. Okay, I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, I, hope, I think the episode's long enough. I hope it was not too derpy and too slow. I hope it was quite clear how I did this. If it was not clear, please let me know and I will do a little se separate episode in a creative world and I'll get it all set up right to start with and um, I'll do it proper. But uh, yeah, let me know and uh, I have a way. I'll have a get another one done or this one's clear enough, hopefully. Right, thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. Cheers. Bye.